Can you feel it? The walls between the sane world and that unplumbed dimension of delirium are tenuously thin here. Hello everyone, Science Viking here, and it's time to return to Darkest Dungeon. Now, I have a decent amount of heirlooms, I'm gonna see if I can find an opportunity to spend them. I already maxed out the guild and the blacksmith really early. And the nomad wagon. Let's see about the survivalist. Nope, that costs more than I have, I'm just gonna have to wait then. In the meantime, I do have plenty of gold. Let's start by seeing if the, uh, the Nomad has anything useful, and the answer is no, she doesn't. So, let's look into upgrading some heroes. Wait, I can check from the menu. I don't need to actually drag all of them over, and yes, everyone's equipment is good. So, let's look into abilities. I know the new character's abilities aren't fully upgraded. Well, some of them aren't. Never mind, they all are. I actually am reaching the point where I have an excess of gold. I suppose having fewer fatalities than I did last time is part of the reason why that's happening. There really just gonna be nobody to upgrade. Seemingly so. There's nobody who has any abilities that I actually there is seemingly no one who has any abilities that I would actually use that need to be upgraded. Well, we all know what that means. To the sanitarium! It's time to treat some negative quirks. Get rid of the Jester's Plutomania. And... So Mako doesn't have anything too bad. Let's see about Gale. Alright, so start with Roz. Let's get rid of the plus 25% str 20% stress of torch above 75, since I tend to keep the torch level rather high. And... How about Gale? How about Kuma? Ah, Demonomania. That's another one that can force quirk interactions, so I'll get rid of that. And I haven't spent all the gold, but I've basically done all the things that I can spend gold on, so let's go for another mission. Okay, so I have the ability to take on the highest level version of the Hag, but there is also a uh, Ruins boss that I haven't taken on yet. And I have some mid-level heroes who need some experience anyway. So, let's see, let's bring in a Cultist. And... If I trade Incision for uh, Noxious Blast, let's bring Mortimer the Plague Doctor in position 4. And... In addition to that, let's bring a uh, Crusader in position 1, because we're going to the Ruins. You should never go to the Ruins without a Crusader. And the Highwayman in position 2. And I'm going to trade Open Vein for Wicked Slice because of how difficult it is to cause bleeding in the, to skeletons anyway. Okay, time for some trinkets. What do I even have for a Plague Doctor? Um, oh, the Blasphemous Vial is actually quite good, and I'll just combine that with the Worry Stone. Since the Occultist is going to be functioning as the main healer, he gets... Um, the uh, Ancestor's Scroll and a Worry Stone. Now that I have that, I don't need to rely on Junia's head as much, since I have one that gives less stress than that. And for the Highwayman, the Flash Fire Gunpowder, and yeah, I'll just go with the Drifter's Buckle. 
And the cultist, of course, gets the uh, signed conscription and the glittering spalders. Okay, let's go get some experience. Bring a little food, but we don't need very much. Plenty of torches. Eight should do. A couple of shovels. So there's barely any use for anti-venom or bandages in the uh, uh, ruins. Ruins is the word that I'm looking for. Okay, that should be everything we need. I've probably forgotten something. The fiends must be driven back. Oh, this is going to be easy. What better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? This is just. This is. Okay, we just got the fish hook layout. This is nothing. Ah, gargoyles. Are they unholy? Yes, they are. It is kind of funny. Gargoyles are, I believe, the only enemy in the entire game that is of the stonework type. But there is actually a trinket that lets you deal extra damage to stonework enemies. Mark the gargoyle in the back. So that I can get a pistol shot. Unnerved. Unbalanced. And still not a one shot because of the high protection. Right, knock the blast on this one. Light is going to be our friend against these things. So they're not doing very much damage. They are doing a lot of stunning, though. They would really be dangerous if they were paired with something more powerful. And great shot blast. Continually onslaught. Destroy them. And since they both have 6 HP, they're essentially done. Who has the most stress? That would be the Plague Doctor. Well, inspiring cry. Ooh. Sedated. And there we go. You know, for being made of stone, the gargoyles are surprisingly These fast. These creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. Proceed towards our first room battle. And may God have mercy on our souls. Wait, wait. I, I know about the God of this setting. It doesn't have any mercy. Okay, let's start with Noxious Blast, in large part because of the accuracy debuff on the Flayer. I really do. I am gonna need some plague grenade. Let's start with pistol shot. And I have a plan. Vulnerability hex on the marks. And in the interest of keeping the commander from doing anything, in addition to reducing his accuracy, I'm gonna try for a stun. And I'm going to fail to get the stun. But he did miss, at least in part thanks to the accuracy. I do have to deal with one more tempting goblin, though. We can incur some of the commander. I wasn't expecting the occultist to go first. Now, Plague Grenade. That deals with the noble, and because the marksman is marked. I can make up the difference Slowly. with pistol shot, and then he dies from the blood. This is how that leaves just the commander, taken. basically. And smite. And may as well go for the reconstruction. Whoa! I was not expecting weird reconstruction to restore that much. Never hidden. Now I need battlefield medicine for bleeding, and it's too late. Fortune waiting to be spent. 
And another room battle. Well, there had to be more around here somewhere. I just go for weird reconstruction again. There's really very little for the occultist to do in this situation. This occultist does not have the best luck with bleeding. Okay, play grenade on the uh, nobility, in fact. A pox on your house. And great shot blast. Probably redundant with this, but I'm not certain. And zealous accusation. Falls, a faint hope blossoms. We are going, and oh, and I have a chance to use pistol shot. And there we go. That's the end of the nobility. In fact, I'm using the to finish it off just because the I enemy can. crumbles. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Also, it is at this moment that I realize that I forgot to give anyone the Ancestor's portrait to get the increased resolve experience. That's unfortunate because I do kind of need to level some people up. Okay, what quirk is it that made you do that? Curious. Okay, that's another quirk that I need to get rid of. Mechanical hazards. Mortimer is just having intent. a bad day. If only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. And, okay, so we do have to go all the way to the end to find the last room battle. Unfortunately, the Crusader and the Plague Doctor are having uh, a bit of a stressful time of it. Have, we have managed a pretty good haul for being a uh, short, a short length mission. Festering fear consumes the mind. Start with vulnerability. Have some cool. Okay, I want to get rid of the ghoul as quickly as possible. Pistol shot. But by dragging the mag, the, by getting rid of the maggot, which doesn't leave behind a corpse, I can now hit the ghoul with Noxious Blast, which does more damage and reduces accuracy. And now, let's go with pistol shot. And vulnerability hex will kill the maggot. Get rid of the maggot so that it can't attack. Maintain the offensive. And another Noxious Blast. And it goes to Howl, and Howl manages to connect with everyone the again. Abyss That's returns even the boldest right, game. Inspiring Cry. Plague Doctor actually has the most stress. And there's nothing that the Highwayman can do other than attack, so I may as well have an attack. Weird reconstruction. Let's try not to cause bleeding. This Compassion time. is a rare Good success. In the pitch of battle. And battlefield medicine. Why not? There a we victory. go. Perhaps the turning point. And the highwayman is the best trap disarm chance. Oh, I haven't let him handle it. Yep, and because the horror is still going, everybody gets stressed every time we take a step. And we found a completely redundant map! Okay, time for the final battle of this mission. You guys can sit back and collect your experience. So, pistol shot on the frothing madman, because he has more hit points. Followed by weakening curse will cause damage and that will matter. Critical weakening curse. Okay, and the plague grenade. It won't get rid of them immediately, but it will move us toward being rid of them at least. And let's see if we can stun the bulwark. But the thing is, these enemies are likely to get two actions before we get any. 
so, they should die during those two actions. And they're both trying to take their vengeance on Mortimer for doing that to them. Great yep, is that's the the that cuts on its own. The Corger gets to live for a moment. Yeah, let's de-stealth for better. I never miss. The slow okay, that's the end of the court here. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Those vulnerability checks on the veteran. Not really much benefit to that, but some. And Noxious Blast on the Bulwark. Because that's really the only way we're getting around that huge of a protection. Such a terrible device. assault cannot be left unanswered. Okay, at least at least the bulwark didn't use axe blade on the on the occultist. So I suppose considering the fact that he has ac he has reduced no accuracy, there's a good chance he would have missed anyway. All right, and we can slice, and there we go. Okay, weird reconstruction on the occultist, and battlefield medicine also on the occultist. Not really much benefit to it, but a critical healing could reduce stress. And there we go. Be wary. Triumphant and pride precipitates a dizzying fall. I, I want to find out what the Eldritch Altar does. Oh, I'm pretty sure this removes a negative quirk. So, I removed Diurnal. I was hoping to remove Curious, but... Okay, so that was definitely worth continuing the adventure for. I'm Your finally learning! To rest. <laughs> Devils remanded to their abyss. Okay. And a decent haul of loot. All getting counted at the end, plus a decent quest reward, and a fair number of heirlooms, too. And, considering the fact that I didn't even manage to spend all of the gold last time, having a little extra gold isn't a big deal. And two more heroes are now champions. One of them is going to need stress treatment. The Blake Doctor is a germaphobe! That's ironic, and a quirk I really need to get rid of. And the Highwayman is unyielding, which means he has increased death blow resistance. I want to lock that in immediately. A ray of sunlight. A beacon of golden hope. Okay. There's Brewardine. Okay, let's lock in unyielding. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get rid of Curious because I actually can afford to. Now let's get some stress treatment. Oh, the, the Ray of Sunlight actually affects... The entire Hamlet is lit up better, and because of the better lighting, the colors actually look a lot more vibrant. That's like... That's a really cool visual to indicate that event. All right, let's treat the Crusader. And treat the Plague Doctor, who, uh... Yeah, will only flagellate for stress relief. All right, I'll go ahead and flagellate Mortimer. And... Let's see, what do I want to upgrade? I think I gotta upgrade the gambling hall next. Assuming that I have enough, uh, three plus eight, or plus four. Right. So that, I'll need to trade in a few crests, but. I can afford to trade in a few crests. But let's fully upgrade the gambling hall. And that's one more facility that's maxed out. And let's see, how are the new okay, and the team of noobs are now actually available to get some experience. So let's embark actually before I embark. Let's see if the Nomad Wagon has anything good. Hell's Hairpin, not really very good. Guardian's Shield isn't very good either. I believe I already have a Demon's Cauldron. And I just generally have other trinkets that I tend to give to the Occultist. But... 
It needs to be a medium length mission. Let's get the new team some experience. Part of the reason why this needs to be a medium length mission is because they need to get at least three resolve experience. So, outfitting the team. Start by unequipping and sorting. And... Hmm. I can use... Let's see, I think I will give the Vestal the Ancestor's Portrait, and then I'll give her the, uh... Oh yeah, the Sacred Scroll will cancel out the, uh, extra stress that she gets. So she... So Neuer's can get the, the increased resolve experience. Jester gets the Bright Tambourine. And... I'll also give him the Tyrant's Tasting Cup, because as long as I keep the Torch level above 75, he doesn't experience the uh, increased stress. It essentially just breaks even. Flagellant gets the Chip Tooth and the Shard of Glass. And the Hellion gets the uh, Lioness War Paint and the Mark of the Outcast. Okay, and I'm going for the medium length one. I believe medium length missions give you at least three resolve experience. I need to get at least three because I need both the uh, Flagellant and the Vestal to reach level two. Then they can go on... Um... Wait, I don't need that much food. We're going to the Warrens. What I need is a lot of anti-venom and bandages. That should be enough. Skeleton keys, some holy water, and plenty of torches and shovels. But what I need is for each of them to be level 2 so that I can send them on medium length missions because the issue is uh, Hale will reach level 3 during this mission. And so I need, and so I will no longer have four people who can go on novice missions. And so I don't want anyone to essentially be trapped at resolve level 1 or at resolve level 1 and unable to proceed. Unable to gain experience. Because I may very well need the need uh, these heroes to fill out high-level missions later. They breed quickly down there in the dark. But okay. perhaps we can slay them even faster. This is a somewhat disadvantageous map layout for an extermination mission. Okay, Harvest will hit two of them and has a good chance of killing both. But instead it killed neither. That's the downside to low-level heroes. Palpable fear. Go straight for healing, and I meant to use the other healing ability. All right, we can hack on the one that is damaged. May as well use the anti venom and punish, and failure to punish. <laughs> and the flagellant is blighted again. All right, we can hack on this one. Executed with impunity. And more anti-venom and punish. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. Though so honestly, given how close we are to the end, I may be focusing too much the on light, training up these the new heroes. Of at all. Safety. Considering the uh, considering the fact that I could probably finish the remaining darkest dungeon quests without using any of these. Right, let's go for harvest. Dazzle one of the gladiators to keep him from attacking. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted. Oh, barbaric yaw has a chance of stunning both clear. of them. It doesn't cause damage, but that's still worth it, even with the reduced damage for the Hellion. Because now half the enemy's strike. team can't attack. I didn't realize. I guess I somehow failed to notice that barbaric yaw stuns two people. And so I didn't realize just how useful that ability could be. That might actually be the only ability in the game that actually has a chance of stunning multiple enemies. Okay. The drummer will die immediately, so let's use Slice Off to also make the brawler die immediately. And it fails, he's one hit point away from death instead. Well, none of the enemies can heal, so that isn't a huge problem. He'll die next turn. 
great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Okay, so the brawler is essentially the only enemy that has hit points left. Let's fix that. Oh. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. But now I have a round. Now I have a turn to just get a little healing in before the enemy dies. Now let's add some stress healing to that. Hellion has the most stress, so let's get her some stress treatment. Slowly, gently. This and a little is how more life healing. is taken. And I may as well finish the enemy off. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. No point in bothering with the blood. Okay, I know who's getting the moonshine, and that's the Hellion. It's a nice plus 30% damage until camp. And camp maybe after the mission is essentially over, just to reduce everyone's stress levels. Let's see if these buffs stack. It do they do! The Hellion now has plus 60% damage until camp. At this point, I'm not- I'm not making camp. Alright. Oh, hol- oh, no, I did bring holy water. For a second, I thought the holy water was the thing that I forgot. Back to the pit. That's one spider gone. Such a terrible and assault. And the flagellant is just a answer. magnet for criticals today. I don't know what he's what's been going. I mean, I don't know when you don't even when you not only don't wear armor but you don't even bother to wear a shirt. I can honestly see why uh, I can see why he ends up taking a lot of damage. Okay, Reign of Sorrows is the only one that will reconsider that hasn't attacked yet, and will guarantee that it dies. Judgment on this one. Okay, that leaves only one spider that survives to the second the round. By inches. Again, inspiring tune on whoever has the most stress, and this time that's the flatulent. Gotta admit, a jester is a very useful class to have. The slow death. Unforeseen. The dazzling light will reduce the probability that the Weber gets to inflict any damage. And it doesn't anyway because the wicked hack misses, and it, it gets a turn, doesn't it? Nope, it goes dead last, and by dead, I really do mean dead. This expedition at least promises success. Um, I'll drop the last of the medicinal herbs for the emerald. Okay, who has the worst negative quirk? Perfectionist is pretty bad, but I don't... Uh, compulsive is worse. So I'm going to have Roger use the holy water on the Elder also. And instead, zoophobia. Does it? Can it just not remove locked-in negative quirks? It may actually be just not able to remove locked-in negative quirks. In which case, it's been rather wasteful that I've been using it. Also, take a moment to appreciate the amount of scouting we haven't received in this mission. Though honestly, we can make do without it. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Let's harvest on the middle. One of them survived. Fix that. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. And punish. And, okay, resisted the debuff, Confidence not the bleeding. But the this maggot crumbles. actually gets to live because it is only bleeding. For I'm not used to how... That's the thing. I'm not used to working with novice heroes, so I'm not used to just how little bleeding damage a level 1 or a level 2 jester is. Wait, he's a level 2 jester, but his abilities haven't been upgraded because I didn't a upgrade him after the, the busking but thing. A victory, so, nonetheless. that's why. He has level 1 abilities. Right. Iron Swan, Iron Miss. Right. Judgment can't kill without a critical, but I may as well still zap it. And Harvest. Unfortunately, Harvest only bleeds for two, so that isn't enough to kill. I'm gonna go for Brain of Sorrows, because that has a good chance of getting rid of both. Which also means we don't need to deal with Mark Exploitation. We have the ones that can inflict Mark, but not the ones that can exploit them. As you see. Right. 
slice off on this one. That's unfortunate. And I'm also not going to have access to Wicked Hack this round. Okay, punish the one with a full health because you have a good chance of uh, finishing it off. No, yours. Chug some anti venom and then use judgment. And that also missed. These are some evasive spiders. And again, with with uh, inspiring tune, which I'm trying to call inspiring cry. Eh, inspiration is inspiration. There we go. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. How did I hit the bone altar with a shovel? Nothing happens. Okay, and we finally have some scouting, and there's a room battle all the way at the end here. Yeah, this is your guys' last mission as novices. Uh, make the most of it. It's gonna be a bit of an experience. At least this is a room battle with an heirloom chest. Okay. Yeah, let's see if it bleeds the blood letter. So in hindsight, I probably should have gone for Wicked Hack because her uh, lead, da her uh, regular damage output is greatly elevated. Just slice off on the fuse leader or on the cutthroat, and now we have to deal with blanket fire. Just uh, the wounds of war just heal can be healed, but never. Hidden. Fortunately, I have a pretty good way to torment the enemy backline with Brain of Sorrows. Rain vengeance down upon them. Okay, that's the end of the cutthroat. Which will also bring the fusilier into range of uh, slicing. And now everyone is bleeding. Everything really does run red in this fight. On our side and there. In fact, yes. The, the <laughs> Let's take a moment to appreciate that Roger the Jester is the only participant in this fight who is not bleeding right now. Other than him... Everybody on both sides is bleeding. And he's gonna make people bleed more. Bandage. The only way that could be funnier would be if the flagellant was the only one who wasn't bleeding. Right, bandage and wicked hand. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. And let's fix the uh, is restored. Let's fix the flagellant. And may as well use Rain of Sorrow. And I guess we can hack on the corpse. I mean, I suppose I could have attacked the, uh... Who has the most stress? Now, uh... The Hellion has the most stress. I could have used, um... If it bleeds, but then I wouldn't have gotten the chance to use Inspiring 2. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. And yeah, drop the citrine for more crests. Okay, hopefully when we make it back to this room, we will have scouting and we'll know whether or not there's a room battle in there before going in there. If we're even more lucky, there won't be a room battle there and we won't have to go in there. May we find victory. Okay, no luck with scouting. We're gonna have to actually go this way and confirm that there's nothing down there. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Okay, nothing. That just leaves this upper part of this. And let's see what we find here. We find loot! And... In this case, the quir the negative quirk, I believe that's Hylomania, isn't actually causing a significant problem. The trap, however, that is causing Ancient a significant problem. traps lie in wait. Unsprung and thirsting for blood. 
Okay, there's got to be another room battle somewhere around here, and well, there are only three places where it could be. Some of this meat looks edible. Yeah, you guys go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not. I don't, I'm not feeling particularly hungry right now. Uh, harvest to accomplish almost nothing. A brilliant confluence of right, skill. If it leads on the purpose. on the wretch to get rid of him. Okay, so I, so we've now been both munched and nibbled. A single strike. Go for you. The wounds of war can be healed, and but never hidden. Punished us four to seven plus four blues. Good chance of it killing, but he did. Anti venom, and this time we can go for the place off. A powerful blow. And that leaves just the other carry in here. More anti venom, and wicked hat. Decimated. We reduced it by 10%. Wow. I mean, I was As hoping to reduce the enemy mount, by 100%. So too but... will resistance. Let's see, you know what? I'll drop the extra stack of food for the, por the portrait. Well, portraits. I could have dropped the holy water, but the possibility of getting rid of negative quirks essentially free is too good to pass up. I'm gonna go for Barbaric Yawp again. The debuff only lasts a few rounds, and it only- it means that her attack power is only up by 40%. Harvest on these two. Wait, even after the buff, their stun resistance is only 75%. Well, let's try stunning one of them. The way is lit. The and Reign of Sorrow is on these two. We require only the strength Unfortunately, it'll be a bit, a bit a lit longer, a little bit longer before the enemies stop being alive. And another Reign of Sorrow. Though if the game keeps giving me this kind of a turn order, it might not take so long. And Wicked Hack. Annihilated. We may as well go for the healing in case this isn't the last battle here. And let the jester just quick inspire himself a little bit. And punch. Be wary. That was not Triumphant the last room pride battle. Precipitates a dizzying fall. There's a fair amount of combat in this mission. And no scouting, so no way to know whether it's right or left. Okay, a different use of holy water, but still a good use of holy water. And more maggots. More chances to be gravely nibbled. Good hack. Lights off and punish and cake because there's no reason to, we don't even need to do anything anymore and completely redundant divine comfort on the off chance healed. of getting a critical. But there we go. Hidden. That was underwhelming. This is not underwhelming, especially now that we're all out of formation. Oh, the Hellion is still in formation, so she'll just have to kill everything by herself. I'm sure she doesn't. <laughs> Wicked hack on the slasher. That protection isn't gonna do any good against the sh against a plus 60% damage buff. Alright. Okay. So for a bandage and then just move back to get back into formation. And the Jester can only use Inspiring Tune and Battle Ballad. I'm just going to have him go for Inspiring Tune. And Reign of Sorrows and the Wretches. Because, frankly, the Hellion and the uh, Flagellant can handle the rest of the enemies by themselves. They don't actually need the other teammates to contribute damage. 
though the uh, increasing number of diseases is a reason to want to end this quickly. Though I believe that, um, I believe the flagellant has Lash's cure, so he can get rid of his own, he can get rid of the tapeworm himself. He can apparently cure a tapeworm by whipping himself. A decisive pummeling. Okay, that was actually less than helpful. Rain of Sorrows and this one. And Wicked Hack on the other one. And there we go. Who has the most stress now? It's still the flat. Which is less than 20, so it only shows one bar. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. Okay. Success. May as well open let's I'll open the strong box later. First, make camp. Feast. Huddled together. Furtive and vulnerable. And now only one person Rats even has a, a uh Yep, lash is cure to remove disease. And You know what? It doesn't actually matter, but I'm gonna use Revel and Oh it does. One person had three points of stress. And now we may as well make camp. The match is struck. A blazing star Wait, the is Yeah, born. the flagellant was the only one who had any diseases. So, yeah. Lash's cure was definitely the right move. Packs laden with loot. And... Often low on supplies. Back to the hamlet. Because apparently camping out in the ruins is more Their restful than actually Their resting up in the hamlet. That, that entirely makes sense. Quite a hall of heirlooms. And mission successful. Everyone is, okay, so a novice medium length mission does give three resolve experience. So everyone is at least level two, so now I can distribute them among medium level missions. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Okay. And no one needs stress treatment. But a few people are now in need of equipment upgrading. Wait, Halle isn't. Neuer is it? Oh, yeah, she is. And while we're at it, let's upgrade some abilities. Attack, if it bleed, er, Adrenaline Rush, if it bleeds, and Iron Swan. Barbaric Yop is good, but I'm not going to use it every time. And... I can't quite upgrade the survivalist, and I'm actually just going to hold on to my heirlooms for now, because I'm also not sure if I want to continue upgrading town structures that are frankly already as good as I need them to be, or whether I want to uh, prioritize, or whether I want to save up for districts. So instead, let's go on another mission. And... The, uh, so the newbies have gotten some experience, the mid-level people have gotten some experience. Now it's time for the champions to get some experience. And we're returning to the courtyard. Oh. I can get the Salacious Diary, which is the Crimson Court trinket for the Vestal. And the thing is, I already have the other one, the Atonement Beads. And so... If I equip these two together, then I actually have a... Even without the Profane Scroll, I can still put together a decent uh, battle vessel. So, this is definitely the mission I want to go on. The question is who to bring. Though for that, the answer is actually fairly... Relatively simple. I'm definitely bring. I want to bring level 5 people in the hopes of them becoming level 6 so they'll be better suited to be sent into the darkest dungeon. I want a reasonably deep roster because while I could put together a team for the darkest dungeon, I don't know that they would survive very well. Okay, so I have a Vestal and a Hellion. What else to bring? Let's bring a Plague Doctor and a uh, Leper. Actually, let's bring a Plague Doctor and a Grave Robber. Because the Grave Robber has the ability... Oh, the Femme Fatales. 
I have an, I've discovered a new team. I discovered a new uh, team composition name. Okay, Mortimer. Um, I'm dropping. What to drop for incision? Um, let's drop battlefield medicine for incision. Okay. Otherwise, I like everybody's ability set, basically. So it's just a matter of equipping people. Unequip and sort. And... Let's see. For the Vestal, I'm going to go with the uh, Ancestor's Scroll and Worry Stone. For the Plague Doctor, she gets the uh, Dissection Kit. And the Blasphemous Vial, though the plus 25% stress is a bit of a risk. For the Grave Robber... It's the Sickening Satchel, because I have another hero who can inflict, uh, Blight. And I may as well also go for the, uh, Blighting Satchel. And while I am going for the Lioness Warpaint, I'm actually giving the Hellion the uh, ancestor's portrait because she needs increased experience. I am risking a lot with regards to stress, but I think I can make it work. So, let us provision. Okay, gotta bring plenty of food. This is apparently just a medium length mission, not a. Uh, lots of anti venom and lots of bandages. Some shovels, some torches. I believe it's still going to use the bloodlight mechanic, so I don't need a huge number of torches. And then skeleton keys and holy water. Okay. Let us begin. And I have enough gold to fund another mission if this goes horribly wrong. Have other heroes braved these swamps and marshes before you? The very grounds themselves are animated by a deep-rooted evil. A okay. cosmic hatred for all that thrive beyond its painted grass. So I need grass. to defeat the Fallen Guardian. I'm not touching that because there's no safe way to interact with it. Okay, I'm going to want to focus on the Courtesan. Start with Poison Darts. It fails. Follow that up with Plague Grenade. It at least hits, and it blights. And of course she goes for damsel in distress, and that also boosts the protection- Oh, this- this is bad. This is real bad. I don't have any way of reducing or bu directly bypassing protection, and the ghoul has 80% protection. Well, my best bet is damage over time. If it bleeds, is a good place to start. So it goes for a stun. Okay, we got the stun. The courtesan is no longer protected. No longer guarded. Oh, ho, ho. and now she's no longer extant. Thank you, Croc. Okay, Mortimer, would you mind following that up with some poison? And an accuracy debuff while you're at it. Perfect. May as well have Frostart do the judgment that does nothing. And let's stick with if it bleeds. Protection is down to 40%, but you know what? Why change what works? Add some poison darts to that. Before long, you will be bleeding and blighted for your entire health. In fact, you are now. Unfortunately, you managed to inflict horror on almost the entire team, so you know what? You die anyway. I don't have any stress healing abilities and everybody's at full health, so... Also, we just got 16 crests from one fight. Well, this mission is certainly lucrative, I'll give it that. Whoa. Ambushed by foul invention. Are these guys part of the trap? How is it possible to have a trap and a, a hallway battle at the same time? I go with incision on the sycophant. Damage over time will help out damage its ability to heal itself. Um, well, we're at it. She's flashing daggers on the other two. It doesn't damage. It doesn't cause bleeding, but it reduces bleeding resistance. Food. Sedated. 
And there we go. Okay, that's one enemy gone. And since they, they don't have uh, the thirst, they only have gathered the blood. Still a potential problem, but a much smaller one. Alright, face. I was hoping we would do slightly more damage than that, but... Incision, because these enemies have low, blight, low bleed resistance compared to their blight resistance. And we can hack, and that still isn't enough to kill, so... Okay, judgment. Let's get rid of one of them. Is broken. Maintain the offensive. And of course, it goes for gather the blood again, which means another chance of getting the crimson curse. Though it's possible to cure it at the sanitarium. Now. Surges as the enemy crumbles. Okay. Take all. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Let's interact with the shrew and see what we get. And we get nothing. Of course, because I didn't bring any of the blood. In hindsight, I probably should have brought a few vials just in case I ended up needing them. It's pr it seems pretty obvious to me that the Guardian is here. Oh, so let's go ahead and use the medicinal herbs on the forgotten delicacies. Get a little bit of extra food. And somehow that got us a torch. Mechanical hazards possessed by evil intent. Okay, this is going to be an interesting fight. Whoa, I wasn't expecting Maddening Wine to do that much. Okay, we'll go ahead and light up a torch. And Poison Dart the Large Flesh Eater. Plague grenade the entire back line. Mortimer can. Uh, no, she can't. I was going to say Mortimer can handle the back line by herself with plague grenade. Then I realized that they all have over 100% blight resistance. Cumin, fix this for me. I am not impressed. Um, for us, our staff to focus on healing. Ow. Unnerved. Unbalanced. And it goes for the thirst, and it manages to hit too, which means it regains the little bit of health I took away from it. Okay, thrown dagger on the flesh eater because it's lighted, so it'll take a little extra damage. Okay, heal the grave robber. And incision. And that also missed, despite the accuracy. Alien. Okay, Wicked Hack. Come on. Big money. Big... Okay. You know, I was ho hoping for high damage, I think, is asking for a bit much. I should be asking it to just hit at all. I mean, something did, but it didn't do enough damage. And she goes a Noxious Blast on the Flesh Eater, because I actually can blight that. And, okay, Iron Swan finally does what I need him. No Thank quarter. you, Kuman. Also, we're starting to get into trouble because this is a team in which no one has any stress healing skills. Mortimer's stress levels are getting dangerously high. Well, there isn't that much of the mission left once this fight is over. Okay, I need to do 18 more damage. Instead, I do 11 damage. Alright, incision. Okay, there we go. That leaves just the regular size flesh eater. That's much more manageable. For death by inches. Ow. See previous comments regarding the Plague Doctor's stress level. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious Thousand killer. Herbs the crests. Uh, 
Shrew's claws are like iron. Spot. Okay, at least it's not the Crimson Curse. Spotted Fever is a lot more manageable. Okay, we need a torch to get through there. I keep instinctively wanting to light up torches to increase the torch level. Then I remember we're in the courtyard, and that mechanic doesn't exist here. Bandages to interact with a pile of strange bones. Wealth beyond and measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. There's a good chance of at least one more room battle before we reach the boss. Also, if we don't have scouting, do not toy with this one. may signal for more. I mean, I'm not toying with it on purpose, but if we don't have scouting when we reach this room, I'm just going to make camp. Obliterated. Okay, that's one. Judgment cannot one-shot, so instead I'm going to try to stun. Of course, that implies that I managed to hit. Okay, let's try pickaxe and kick to the face again. Well, it did damage this time, just not as much as I was hoping. Decimated. Okay, got some decent loot. But this like expedition I was saying, at least promises success. If we don't have scouting when we enter this room, I'm just making camp. Because there's a decent possibility that the boss is actually here, and that there's something else here. The courtyard has done things like that before. So make camp. A spark feast. without kindling is a goal without hope. Right. We need sanctuary. Now, let's go with encourage. <laughs> Courage. And I'm also going for Sharpened Spear because we're going into a boss fight. Okay, Mortimer's stress level is now manageable. And the sack is empty because, of course, the sack is empty. At least the sack isn't like full of spiders or something. It could be worse. Okay. Okay, this isn't the boss room, it's just a regular room battle. Which in the courtyard is a bit of a thing. Right. Yeah, have everyone concentrate on the sycophant until it's gone to prevent it from healing itself. Okay, one more solid hit in the sycophant. One more hit of any kind, really, in the sycophant. The, the critical fall, is completely unnecessary, but I'm not complaining about it. Especially since it reduced more to the stress level. A dizzying blow to body and brain. And, of course, he goes for damsel in distress. That's a bit of a problem. Pick up the face. Decision and failure. And now, careless whispers, because we because we needed more stress. The abyss returns even the boldest gaze. Okay, this is starting to turn bad. Can't go for divine dump, but we need healing. We also need antivenom. Unfortunately, we have antivenom. Okay, kill the flesh eater. No, you only wounded the flesh eater. Right, flashing daggers should finish the job. Continue the onslaught. Right, that's the end of damsel in distress. Them Go for more antivenom. And incision. Incision and power. Right, and wicked hack. Okay, the courtesan is done. The slow death. Now we just need to deal with the flesh eater. Unforgiving. Careful with the divine comfort. The flesh is knit. There we go. And we found a trinket for the occultist. So clearly in view. Not that it's likely to be terribly or is it helpful. Merely a trick of the light. Point interaction.
interacting with the forgotten delicacies, but... Okay, so the boss was actually in the final room. Okay, moment of truth time. Can we handle it? Let's find out. The Hamlet cannot stand for this thing that should not be. Defeat it. Claim the prize it guards. Okay, how do I do this? It's guarded by the shield. And the shield being a stonework. So, there are stonework enemies other than the, uh... There are stonework enemies other than the dark ones. And no surprise, Blade Grenade does nothing to either. Switch attack. Does little. And what happens when I stun? Oh, it has 240% stun resistance, so there's no way to stun it. Skyward Shield. That removes the garden status. Feed the soil, that just does damage. The Guardian himself doesn't get to attack. Okay. Alright. So the Guardian is also made of stone and also doesn't ha doesn't take, uh, can't be blighted. So this is not exactly the best team composition for this, but I do have Emboldening Vapors. Honestly, Emboldening Vapors and Battlefield Medicine are enough of a benefit to make Plague Doctor worth plummeting doom. Oh, it also causes knockback and stun. That is pretty doom. That, that's the only like doom is, is an appropriate term for that. Okay. Feed the soil does relatively little damage. We can overcome that with healing. And what happens? I wonder what happens when I kill the blood font. I may as well attack it. I have a hunch that destroying the shield will cause it to counterattack in some way. I can't prove it, but I have a hunch. Alright, use up Emboldening Vapors. Find Grace for the rest of the team. Okay, it flies up again. And the spear goes for Feed the Soil. And Wicked Hack. A singular okay, so strike. a critical only does 21 out of 246. Um, oh, right, I don't have battlefield medicine equipped. And there's absolutely no way I'm blighting any of these. So I may as well go for incision. It does a little bit. And I can't use pick to the face from this position, so I'll have to move the grave robber forward. And Frostart is bleeding for little enough that I'm not even going to cure it because I'm running out of bandages. Okay, plummeting doom. And it also, it still managed to stop. Feed the soil missed at least, that's good. Okay, may as well use pick to the face on the enemy with elevated protection. Well, use incision because there's really nothing else Mortimer can contribute anymore. Right. So far, this isn't unbearably difficult, it's just time consuming. Though criticals will tend to change that, and afflictions could also change that. I'll just have the Hellion move forward one. And pick the face on the main body now. And incision on the main body now. Just gradually chip away at it. And Divine Comfort can still outheal the bleeding. The problem really is stress. Since Feed the Soil directly causes stress, it doesn't just cause damage. And the Hellion resisted being moved this time. Unfortunately, you have to wicked hack the shield again. Quakes. And fix the base. I guess I'm going to find out whether or not destroying the shield is something that the game punishes you for. If not, removing it is almost certainly a good idea. Though whether or not we win this fight is ultimately going to come down to affliction effects. Just whether... How many heroes end up afflicted versus virtuous 
and how many and what kinds of afflictions they get if they get afflictions. Continue using Wicked Hack with boosted damage. Plus 46% damage for the rest of the battle. And Pick to the Face doesn't have elevated damage, but it does ignore protection. We've done more than we've done almost a hundred damage to this thing. We have now done more than a hundred damage to this thing. Okay, plummeting doom. This time on a hero I can more afford to have displaced. Vestal, Frostart, just keep healing. It's fortunately feed the soil is distributing the stress fairly evenly. It hasn't targeted Mortimer again in quite a while. So removing its ability to do that would be helpful. So when I can't target the boss, I'm going to target the uh, I'm going to target the thing that's attacking me. And just keep just keep healing through the damage. You know, here's an interesting thing to think about. If this game did not have a stress mechanic, this fight would be tricky. It would just be time-consuming, but wouldn't be hard at all. The stress mechanic is the only reason why this fight is difficult, because it means that there's a kind of ticking clock out. Oh, I can still use Pick to the Face from position three. Masterfully executed. Okay. In hindsight, maybe I should have given the Grave Robber the damage buffs. The trade-off is the Grave Robber has weaker base damage, but ignores protection. The Hellion has higher base damage, so a percentage boost increases her base, increases her total damage more. I'm not sure which one actually benefits more from the effect. And our first resolve check, what's it gonna be? Hopeless, okay. There can be no hope in this hell. No hope at all. And plummeting doom and it's on the Hellion. Please resist the move, thank you. Resisted the move and the stun. Pick the face. You can only reach either the shield or the. Uh, you only reach the shield. But I'm gonna iron swan the font again. Well struck. Okay, I'm not sure exact. I'm not sure what the long-term effects of that are going to be, but I guess I will find out in a moment. And I will also be able to get rid of the shield this turn. I can still use incision from position three. Okay. Hatred beyond time. It boosts its damage, accuracy, and critical. That ain't good. Annihilating glare. And its protection is still 50%. Okay, so it just switches. It's very much like the Swine King, where it attacks... Where it starts using an attack that hits the entire party when you get rid of its ability to... Uh, when you get rid of its normal mechanic, essentially. And incision. Fortunately, it is pretty low on health. Oh no. It gets to attack twice. And one of its actions will always be hatred beyond time. I may have just made a huge mistake. Alright, the face. Divine Grace. And I can't heal Mortimer either. Wonderful. May as well heal everyone else, but Mortimer is going to be making a death blow check soon. life ebbs. Terrible vistas of emptiness. Oh, and the bleeding is worn off. Oh, critical incision. Okay, Mortimer is going to make a death blow check, and we're going to find out what happens with that, but everyone else will be okay, at least for now. Death's door. Okay, she survived, but now I have two people who are at death's door. Alright, wicked hack. Fortunately, the more it damages Kuman, the more damage Kuman causes. Wait. The... <laughs> Um, the Grave Robber is not at death's door. Okay, one more round and it's gone. So whoever survives, it's... And since no one is at death's door, 
and no one is close to having a heart attack, it can't kill anyone with Annihilating Glare this turn. To a killing blow. But now two people are at death's door. Injury and despondence set the stage for heroism or cowardice. Okay, Kuman is hopeless. Croc is courageous. And that reduces everyone's stress a little bit. Bless me, this is... Okay, that is an awesome line. As her resolve is tested and she comes and she comes out courageous and says, Bless me, this is going better than I thought. Well, it is, because Wicked Hack should be able to finish the boss. It crumbles for Especially now, if it gets a critical. I fear there may be no end to this bloodborne evil. Ooh. Tyrant's Fingerbone. I get the Jester's other, uh... So I got the Jester's other Crimson Court trinket in addition to getting the, uh... Vestal's other Crimson Court trinket. Okay. One, there's nothing else constructive we can do here. And two, if we stay here any longer, we will probably all die. Let's return to the Hamlet. But I now also have the Salacious Diary. Which means I can now put together a Battle Vestal without the Profane Scroll. And we at least earned back our investment in the mission, plus plenty of heirlooms. And they're all level 6 now. I mean, they're in rather terrible shape in terms of stress, and one of them has a disease. But, we survived and we completed the mission. Cast out from the civilized world, these men may yet be of use to us. Okay, so I have two lepers that uh, want to join me, but unfortunately I can't really do anything with them. They're level zero, so I can't really afford to accept them right now. So, let's transept the uh, Hellion and flagellate Mortimer again. Okay, so, but that's four more people who are now max level and will be ready for, um... Oh, Frostart also needs stress treatment. Well, she can just be cloistered. We'll be ready to go to the Darkest Dungeon. More importantly, I have specific plans for the next Darkest Dungeon mission, and they actually will most probably require a Hellion, so I specifically wanted to train up Kuman. I'm actually thinking my team for that mission will specifically be an Occultist, an Arablist, a Bounty Hunter, and a Hellion. How much stress does Grulart have right now? He has, uh... 35. He loses a little bit every week. I'm not sure if I actually... I won't stress treat him yet because I don't think the next mission that I go on will be a visit to the Darkest Dungeon. However... Roz's equipment is not maxed out despite her being high enough level to have it. Well, let's fix that. But I am going to hold on to the rest of my gold. However... Having defeated another boss and made some more progress in training up heroes for the end game of this playthrough, this is going to be the end for this episode. Thank you all for watching, I love you all, and I will see you next time.